Hello folks, it's Kodiak here, back for another RimWorld Survival Guide video, and I am super excited. One, because I fixed my mouse. Look, where I point is now where I'm actually pointing. I can't believe it took me this long to figure that out. I'm a little bit ashamed as somebody who prides themselves in being pretty good at understanding technology. So, we did it. You can now see where I'm clicking, which is probably pretty dang important in a simulation game where there's a lot of micromanagey stuff going on. So I do apologize. I think it's like episode seven or eight or something like that. We finally figured it out. But here we are. We are back with the Redbrook tribe. And if you remember from last episode, our production was kind of underway here. We've got our living quarters up here. We've got our production facility down here and things are moving swimmingly it is raining currently it's foggy it's gross out we got through our first winter we're kind of in the middle of our second summer here and what we really need to focus on is continuing to expand our population and starting to really think about transitioning over a lot of this wood stuff into more blocky structures so that fire is not an issue we want to keep advancing our colony as much as possible so this is kind of like a grab bag episode of like doing multiple things at once because at this point, we're kind of on a, a pure trajectory into the chaos land that is the mid-game slash, you know, mid-late-ish type game. So here we are. We do need to get our food production back underway. We're only at 50. We did add another animal. Obviously, this boompalope that I still want to kill at some point. We do still have two prisoners who are, how are they doing? 36 and 31. We're not even close with those guys. So that may take just a little bit of a minute to get them truly broken, if you will. And yeah, so we're going to keep moving this along. Our good friend Sweeney, our crafter extraordinaire, is getting us steel. She's getting us wood. Not wood. She's getting us blocks. Everything is good. And I don't know if you guys noticed this. This happens to me all the time. And I always forget to adjust it. So with these big storage rooms, right? If you have a big storage facility like this, you may notice that there's no support in the middle, which means it's open. So if I click on any of this, oh, look, it's, it's unroofed. There's nothing over these blocks here, this this you know fur or whatever. So it's actually deteriorating. So I do need to build some supports and I just easily do that by, did I do that evenly? I'm gonna be so mad if I didn't. Of course I didn't, cause I'm an idiot. So I try and do everything evenly because you know me, I'm a little OCD when it comes to this stuff. And there we go. We do need to expand our zone to cover that area back up. So once those things are built, hopefully somebody's on it. There we go. Look, automatically, I sped that up super quick. So that happened really fast in real time. But they built the, the supports here and boom, we've got a roof. So that was a really long explanation and a long way to say, make sure you have roofs over your buildings. It will save you lots of stress in the long term. And one thing I can do, I'm feeling a little confident. We're going to go after all this animal stuff. Let's see who's going to hunt it. I forget who's hunting. Is goat our hunter? You'd think I'd be able to remember this stuff, but I really can't. Not goat. Not Rory. Rory's planting. There it is. Red. Red is hunting some turkeys. He's doing something. What is he using? He's using his recurve bow. He's going to hunt something else. What's he going to hunt? He's going to hunt these doe. So that's good. That'll give us a little bit of leather, which we're going to start needing a lot more of, especially as we start building like rec rooms and things like that. So we are going to want to do that. We are going to transition over into our water powered facilities very soon we have the components i'm not worried about components i think we've got like 80 something 36 36 we've got 36 components we haven't even touched any of our mining really on this map so we can build our water mill generators that's just going to prevent us from wasting time with all of the silly um wood fire generators i just don't like them they just get i don't know they're just not great in my opinion so that's a pretty good spot right there Again, you don't want to overlap these. You can a little bit. And I don't actually, I don't know if I've ever actually like truly did like a big overlap. I just don't, yeah. See, I don't even know if it'll let you. You can do a little bit of an overlap, but I, I tend to not do it. I just tend to keep them far away. This is like the effective zone, if you will, right? So you want to keep them as far away from each other as possible here. It's not the easiest map to build on. You see how it's blinking? That means there's a, there's a conflict there. I don't know if, can I do any overlap? I don't know if I can do even a little bit of overlap let's see maybe i'll be able to do it here yeah so that's even a little bit of overlap i can put it down but it looks like there's a conflict so i wonder if that's just telling you that there's not full power potential out of those facilities now one challenge that i kind of just made for myself is i am going to have to run waterproof in waterproofed conduit 
Wow, that is hard to say. So I'll just run the waterproof conduit. That allows me to get across shallow water. You do need to be careful in heavy water like this. So we're going to have to use an option around the heavy water. So we'll just do something simple. Let's see how I can do this without any problems. Hmm, 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 hmm. I may have to go here. Nope, that's not going to work. Where can I go? Can I go here? There it is. So I have to get to that point there. And I'm not sure quite how I'm going to do it. I may do something like that. I kind of need to see them first. I'm not worried about power and making sure that I have power going here all the time because I've got batteries that are fully charged. I've got three fuel generators. I'm not super worried. So we're going to let them work on those two in the background. I believe those are 1,200 apiece or, or 1,400 apiece. It's a really good amount of energy. That'll allow me to get rid of at least two of these generators. It's constant power going to our facility. So th those are actually really, really good. I find them to be some of the best power solutions in the game um, obviously of course geothermal is just fantastic but we're not at that point yet so we need to have some solution that will get us to the next point and of course playing with randy random we got some cargo pods with some hyperweave that's really good now one thing i want to make you guys all aware of and i don't know how many of you do this now it's very easy to go in here and just make t-shirts make pants make jackets but you really need to be careful about the details right? Hyperweave is an expensive cloth, right? So if you ho hover over this, you know, it, it tells you a little bit about it. It's specialized. It's whatever. Um, I don't know if you can break that out anymore. I don't know if there's specific qualities about the hyperweave that you can find out. Let's see if there's anything. There you go. So you would have to go into the properties for something like hyperweave. Um, it's, you know, we're looking at light leather right now, hundred percent flammability. It's got low hit points. Uh, this is the multipliers against certain weaponry. So when you're doing things like this, when you're crafting something like a t-shirt, you want to make sure that hyperweave is not selected. You want to, you don't want to waste your good stuff on a t-shirt unless you mean to do that. So leathers, alpaca wood, camel hair, cloth. I don't want cloth to be part of it, to be honest with you. Cloth is pretty expensive and valuable. Um, I definitely don't want devil strand right now. And mega wool and muffalo. I really don't want any of that. I want them to use the leathers, the alpaca, and the camel hair. And that's kind of the same for all of this stuff. So that's really, it's a weird lesson that I'm kind of describing right now, but it's something that a lot of new players don't do. They just kind of, okay, I want a t-shirt. Well, they're going to use whatever fabric is available to them in, you know, the storage facilities that, that you have set up. So that could be a problem if you use all of your high valuable resources like Hyperweave. And that is the same thing when you're building weaponry. So I can't do it right now. Let's see if I can, oh, we'll build a smithy. I think it's probably time to build a smithy. I don't do a lot with my smithies in this game. I don't like melee weaponry, especially, you know, after the like beginning point. Oh my gosh, why is, why is there, oh, it's just hot in here. 99 degrees in there. We'll give them an air conditioner too. We do want our production people to be nice and cool. So once you're building something like a, you know, we can, we can show you in the stone cutter. So right, if I, eh, actually, I really can't. I really can't. If you're building something at like a smithy and you want to build a sword, for instance, or a Gladys or something, you want to make sure that you're selecting the right type of material to build that Gladys. Uh-oh, something blew up. Oh, Bishop. Our poor Bishop fellow here is just unbelievably helpless. Our batteries popped. That is part of the reason why we build the batteries over there because one of the batteries short-circuited. The wood structure caught on fire. Luckily, we are away from the rest of the building. I'm not super worried about that. I don't have... I need some stone. What do I got? I've got 800 limestone. 800 limestone. All right. So we'll put some limestone there just so the floors don't catch on fire. And we're at a really good point where we can start really reconditioning our buildings to deal with kind of our new situation. So this is my... It's not the best strategy. I wouldn't even say it's 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 probably a pretty bad strategy, but I actually build around usually what I have available to me. And if I have available, you know, if I can do it, sometimes you can't do this depending on the biome you're in or something like that. So I'm going to build around. And then eventually what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of all of that wood stuff. And I'm going to have a whole new section that's going to be a little bit bigger and it's going to be, oops, probably make that a medical facility. Is he going to die? Oh, he's, he's whole body malnutrition. I need some doctor up in here. Somebody needs to feed our man Bishop. Oh my God, what is wrong with these two right now? 
You're being a huge pain in the ass. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, I have my limestone structure building around our production facility. Once that's all built, the bare bones are laid out. What we're going to do is we're actually going to just deconstruct all of the rest of this stuff. Uh-oh. Somebody's hunting somebody. Oh, they're trying to kill... They're trying to... Oh, gosh. They're trying to kill the husky again. I don't know why they keep doing this. There we go. Vivian is fine. She's probably a little hurt. She's in, she's in severe pain, but she'll be okay. She'll survive. I hope. All right. So, like I said, I'm building around... Ooh, we got an incapacitated refugee quest. Hmm. He says there may be danger there. When it says there may be danger there, it usually means there's not much there. I think I'm going to go for it. And I'm actually going to send a caravan of three. That feels safe. I'll give him some pemmican. I know that's an insane amount of pemmican. Maybe I'll just do 150. That'll get us three days. That's less than a day away. Boom. This is an easy, easy decision. Send him out there. They're going to get the, the incapacitated refugee. They're going to fight off either some rats or some snakes or something, and then they're going to come back, and we're going to have a new person in our colony. That is a really easy decision to make. Um, obviously, I left uh, with just three people here. I want to make sure that there's somebody still at the facility to keep things going. And they are... What is Red doing? Why is Red all upset? Red, what's wrong? He's recreation starved. What happened to our rec... Oh, uh, no, it's still there. He's just being a baby. So we will give him another option for recreation. We'll give him the game of your... Because apparently they don't have enough to do with their hoop stone. We don't have a warden currently. I'm not super worried about that. We'll take care of that eventually. We're actually going to pull down. This is still a fueled electric stove. Or sorry, this is still a fueled stove. Um, look at this. Nice little peaceful caravan. We're going to move on from that. We're going to make that into electric stove. So much to keep track of, isn't there? Bishop is berserking now. That's fun. Oh, he's trying to attack Richard. So I'm going to recruit all my guys. I'm going to get them over here. I'm going to let them duke this out. Hopefully Richard wins. Good, he did. Unbelievable, these two. Okay. So Bishop is back. Do I have a doctor on site? I do have a couple doctors on site. I just want to make sure Bishop is fine. I don't want to lose him. And let's go over to our refugee area here. This is the highlight of the episode. I'm, I'm going to have to say, oh, look, his name is Earth. That's nice. This is the highlight of the episode. Picking up a refugee here is a big deal. All right, so we need to be very careful when we do this. Okay, it's very easy. Who's got a melt? Bishop? Okay, I'm not worried about you right now. We do need to be very careful when we do this. Okay, if we get too close, if we're too ambitious, we could get... See, there it is, right there. So we've got a bunch of chinchillas. I'm going to let Wasp come up front. Hopefully they all hit their targets. Hit your targets, hit your targets, hit your targets. Good, that's one down. And hopefully Wasp is okay. Boom. All right, how do we do? We just got a couple bite marks. Nothing super crazy. Uh, we will kill this last chinchilla. Great, they're all dead. We will unallow that, or we will allow that. And we're going to offer help to our new friend, Earth, who is going to join us. Now, how bad is Earth hurt? He's not severely stab scar, bruises. He's fine. He's totally fine. So we are going to reform the caravan. We're going to reform the caravan. We're going to make sure everybody's in there. We're going to bring the chinchillas with us. That's free food and free whatchamacallit. It's going to take us a little bit longer. 3.1 days. We will run into a food issue, but I'm really not that worried about it. All right. So they're on their way back. Hopefully nobody gets hurt or sick. Get rid of all that stuff. We did have another item stash quest in there, but I'm not going to do that right now. Primary focus is getting earth back. Now, one thing you can do, you can bring bedrolls with you. You can chop down trees and build beds. Um, you can... Oh, God, there's so much you can do. Basically, what I'm getting at here is you always want to bring medicine on your little journeys. I should have brought some medicine there. I was a little cocky. I didn't really think I needed it for an early game. Oh, my gosh, a raccoon self-tamed. I don't want a raccoon. Um, an early game, you know, refugee quest. I didn't really, felt, didn't really feel like I needed that medicine. I probably should have put it in there since, you know, I have 180. But 
that's okay. All right, so they need to get on this electric stove right away. We have no way to making food right now. So the electric stove is just going to tap into the network here, which is going great. We did get our first water mill up too, and we'll take care of that in two seconds here. And boom, we've got our electric stove. We're going to get some pemmican going. We want to do this until we have, what do we say, 500 before? We'll say 400 now. We've got a couple more people in the, in the queue, and we will make simple meals until we have, let's say, 100. 100 is a good place. It'll keep them working. Now let's deal with this. So in terms of power, like I said, we are going to have to use the conduit, the waterproof conduit. I'm blanking right now. How about I go to the power tab? That'll probably help. So we'll keep this one nice and simple. We're just going to do straight across there, and then we're going to do straight across there, and that's going to tap us into the network. So there you go. That's very simple. Rory is not feeling it right now. What's going on with Rory? I don't know what's going on with Rory. Not good. Not good, Rory, but hopefully you're okay. Are we out? Of, oh, we need to we need to juice up these generators. We got nothing going on right now. Juice them up. Goat. Get the power going. All right, so Goat is taking care of that right now. We got plenty of wood, so this will get us how many more days? That'll get us 3.4 days. Once we get this conduit laid, that should give us a steady flow of energy. And we will be good. Not a huge excess. Actually, a, a deficit right now. We're hovering right at the line, so we do need to get some more power in our facility here. Look at that, some plastic steel. Plastic steel is good stuff. You don't want to lose that. And our kind of production facility is slowly going. Of course, we have four people off the base. They're getting there. It's taking a minute, but they're getting there. More cargo pods. Holy moly, that's a lot of cloth. It's 200 cloth in that cargo pod. That is really good news. One, because it gives us a lot of steel. Two, because it gives us a lot of cloth. So that's really good. So we are doing okay. Rory is eventually going to need to pick that back up, but Rory can't walk at the moment. What is wrong with Rory? Oh, she's got food poisoning. Got the food poisoning, probably because our pantry is kind of a mess. One thing that we can do here is we can actually start with flooring in there. And do a little bit of that. Another caravan. We're going to move on. We don't need to deal with them right now. They did run out of food, but they're going to be just fine. They probably just ate. You don't need to freak out too much if your caravan runs out of food unless they are, like, literally miles away. I never freak out about it. I never seem to run into any problems. So, that's probably a good time to get rid of our passive coolers. Don't really need them. Don't need to keep them stocked up anymore. We can put some air conditioners in our facility. One of the challenges with air conditioners in facilities is something like this, right? You have a cold side and a hot side. So you do need to figure out and you can use vents to equalize pressures between rooms. Um, that is a strategy that you can do if one room is hotter than another, um, but that's completely up to you. We need to clean this place up. Look at this place. This place is disgusting. I forget who's our cleaner. I think it's Gogo. -Go. Let's get him back. Let's clean this place up. So they should be coming back super soon. They're moving a little slow right now, but they'll be back soon. Getting there. There they go. They start moving now. So we're going to get back. We're going to have to heal up Earth, but that's okay. We should build another bed for Earth. Our living facility is not looking... It's not looking super great. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not up to my standards in terms of how I usually build these things. And by now, I usually have multiple bedrooms for people. But, you know, they can't all be winners. What I can do is I'll move these out a little bit. I'm going to move that over. And once I do that, everybody should be coming back. Earth is walking. They're almost here. The return of the triumphant caravan. And then we'll put another bed next to there. There they are. The gang's all here. We're going to assign Earth to acceptable clothing. And we're going to take a peek at what Earth brings to the table. So he's a gardener. So he's got fantastic harvesting skills. We're going to take Red off of gardening. While he does have that nine skill, we don't really need him to do it anymore. 
Um, he does have the passion for it, but look, Earth is a gardener. He's got a 10 skill. I'm not worried about that. We're going to give him a 1 for plant cut. We're going to keep Red at a 2 for plant cut. We're going to move Wasp up to a 1 for plant cut. And in terms of other things that Earth brings to the table, it's really cooking and brewing and a little bit of wardening. Other than that, though, not much he's bringing to the table. We'll bring his healing up, or sorry, his cleaning up to 2. And of course, we want him to be a good firefighter and patient. So it's a good addition to the team. We do have a lot of plant overlap at the moment, but that's okay. That is perfectly fine. Uh-oh, we got a mad buck on the loose. Is anybody hunting the buck? Nobody is hunting the buck. He's just pissed off about something. I am going to deal with this. Um, a buck is, rel you know, relatively dangerous. So I don't want this to become a problem. You know, if he, if he gets somebody kind of out in the wild and... and gets a good shot at them it could it could be a potential bleed out issue just something i want to avoid to be honest with all of you it'd be nice if anybody could hit anything there we go and that's going to give us a little bit of food which is going to be nice as well i don't think it's the best strategy recruiting everybody but to be honest with you i'd rather do that and know that i'm having that kind of like safety i do that when i have five people i do that when i have 20 people and it's really it's really probably a bad strategy but it works for me it makes sure that everybody stays safe and at the end of the day that's what i care about making sure i don't have to deal with any crazy medical issues so while this episode started out being like a grab bag i think it really ended up being about in you know that incapacitated refugee quest getting another colonist in here taking that risk talking about expanding your your colony um, using a strategy like this expanding around the perimeter of um, a facility like this, what I can do is I'm, I've got almost a whole wall built. I can actually put the deconstruct orders in carefully. I don't need to be overzealous about it, right? Because they're going to build at their own pace. I do want to make sure pretty much the facility is always blocked in. I don't want to deal with any of the negative repercussions of that. But now that I have everybody here, everybody is working hard, which is really good. And I actually may want to boost... Hmm... I kind of want Rory to do, maybe Rory, maybe Wasp. I don't know who I want to do. I don't know if I want more construction right now. The emphasis on construction is a little lighter than I'm used to. They're still, they're working on it. Goat is working on it, um, but I just may want more, you know, because they're doing a lot of farming right now. And while I do have a lot of, you know, crops, um, those are going to become a lot more valuable sooner rather than later. But I do need to get this construction stuff really locked in if I want to expand quickly as I get more colonists. So we're in a really good place here. We've got this facility still not tied in. That's going to be next. I'm actually just going to, maybe he can, if I do that, maybe he'll just do it. He kind of did it. Not really. I'm going to have to manually do it. This is one of like my biggest pet peeves with this game. I have to like tell him a million times to do it. Just do it. Just do it. Build the things, please build all the things now he's going to walk away but i want you to build it there we go now we're tied into the network which is great and then i'm going to have him work on that one next and my refueling is pretty low i'm actually going to bump up refueling on earth i'm going to have earth prioritize refueling just because for right now it's pretty important just with these three generators until we're totally independent from these generators um, I want to keep refueling one because I want these batteries to move up. I want to make sure that I have all the batteries always charged up in case something happens. I get raided and I lose something or something blows up. I don't know. Nothing's ever blown up on me in this game, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. We're going to give Sweeney a three for construction and we'll give Earth fours for construction in case they, they do have some free time and they want to help. You know, this season can get a little boring and here they are fighting again so richard is having a meltdown he's gonna bust through that door in a second here and unfortunately we're gonna have to knock him down and there we go did we kill him oh i thought we killed him i just got really worried for a second all right so unfortunately by doing this we're gonna have to build a door again which you guys know is just a huge pain in the butt we're gonna use this as an opportunity to build a limestone door. I'm going to have... Oh, I didn't want Gogo to do that. Sorry, Gogo. I wanted Goat to do that. I'm going to have Goat build this thing real quick so I can unassign these as prisoner beds. And there we go. And now everybody can get back to sleep. 
which is just annoying because everything got unowned, which is just a pain in the butt. But such is life in this game, in this room world of ours. All right, so there we go. Everybody's still just... Okay, you can all sleep on the floor. That's fine. What do I care? And I don't know if you guys noticed this. Our limestone floor did get built, so that is really good for in here. Our temperatures are getting a little high. We do need to keep an eye on that. We will bring that down just a little bit. There's a lot of traffic in and out of this room. That's part of the issue. And what we can do... Oh, Bishop died, you son of a bee. That's what you get for berserking all the time, you jerk. Wow, that needs a second temperature regulator in there. So we're going to need to build a second... A second... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Air conditioner in there. Because this room is just getting really hot. Come on, goat. Where are you? There you are. All right, so let's bring that down. We'll bring that down to 16. What's the other one at? Negative 2. We'll bring this one down to negative 2 as well. This should superpower. Let's see. It's going to take a minute to bring it all the way down. And okay, there we go. We're back under freezing. That's what we want to be under freezing. So nothing spoils. That's really bad. And I heard some building. What were they building? They still haven't finished down here. They are working at a kind of a weird... Oh, we've got a raid. We've got a relationship raid. Oh boy, this is not good. Incendiary launcher, pump shotgun, knife, pump shotgun, and a pistol. So they are going to be a tough challenge for us. We do have plenty of people that can help. We don't want Red to go out there. So we are going to assign everybody to get in there right now. We're going to have Goat come up here. I actually think Goat needs to quickly build a recurve bow. Can he do that for me? Oh, his skill is under five. Okay, so Ro Goat is not going to be able to do that. We do have two pump shotguns, so I'm not 100% worried. So I'll put our two pump shotguns up front. I'll put my three archers in the back here. Sweeney is unfortunately in a daze at the moment. She cannot help us. One of these guys is moving really slow. So it's really a four on five at the moment, which is fine. Sweeney may actually get shot in the middle of this because there's nothing I can do about Sweeney. Like actually nothing. And two nice shotgun hits there. Another nice shotgun hit. Hit him, hit him. There we go. There's one. And we're just going to shoot over there. We're going to have our shotgunners come over here. And take on Carrie. Yeah, Sweeney's getting hit. She's going to get knocked out. 100% going to get knocked out. Calling it right now. I'm going to come out here with my shotgunners. Try and see if I can stop Sweeney from getting knocked. She got knocked. Oh, no. Sweeney got killed. Oh, no. Oh, that is so unfortunate. And as, as a rule to myself, I am not going to reset the game. I could easily go back to an autosave. I'm not going to do it. It's kind of cheap in my opinion. I do like doing it under certain circumstances, but in this one, I'm not going to do it. It just really stinks because Sweeney was such an integral part of our production chain. So that is a really sad way to end this video. We will sit here and... and mourn the loss of Sweeney as we say goodbye for the day. Guys, we did get a lot accomplished. We also had a couple setbacks. That is the roller coaster of this game, RimWorld. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you want more RimWorld gameplay, survival guide videos in your feed. And as always, my name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at The Game Gurus, thanks for watching, and play on. Thanks for checking out the video. If you want to learn more about the game or just want to be part of an incredible video game community, join the Game Gurus on Discord. Be the first to know what's going on with the channel and interact with me and the rest of the team on a daily basis. To join, check out the link below.